Strega Nona, Her Story, as told by Tommy Di Paolo. It all began one night a long time ago in a little village in the hills of Calabria, in the country now known as Italy. Almost everyone was fast asleep. The weather was fierce that dark night. The wind blew and blew. A cold rain fell, and a baby was about to be born. Oh, my poor wife, Giuseppe, the young husband, said to Zia Rosa, who was there to help. Every child of ours was brought into the world by Grandma Concetta. But with this terrible weather, how will she be able to come down from her little house on the hill? Hours passed. The wind blew harder. More rain fell. Still, the baby didn't come. Where is that the baby? Giuseppe asked. Zia Rosa lit a candle. Perhaps it is waiting, she answered. For what? Giuseppe asked. For me, cried Grandma Conchetta, bursting through the doorway on a gust of wind. No grandchild of mine can be born without me. Taking off her cloak and rolling up her sleeve, she headed for the bedroom. Follow me, Rosa. Now the baby will come. And sure enough, a baby girl was born in no time at all. Ah, said Grandma Conchetta, looking down at the new bambina. She shall be called the nonna, and she will become a strega. As soon as little nonna could walk, Grandma Conchetta took her along when she gathered herbs and weeds for her lotions and potions. Grandma Conchetta was a strega, and all the villagers came to her for cures and advice on many things. Ah, Nonna Lina, here is Rosmarino, Rosemary. Very good for growing hair, especially on the bald heads. Also excellent as furniture polish. And here is Aglio Salvatico, wild garlic. The only thing for an upset stomach. Come along, and let's see what else we can find. By the end of their walk, Grandma Conchetta's basket would be filled to overflowing. When little Nana was old enough to go to school, she was sent to study with the sisters of the convent. There, she met little Amelia, and they became best friends right away. Nana helped Amelia with her lessons, especially spelling and writing, and Amelia, in turn, loaned Nana her pretty hair ribbons, even though Nana didn't ask for them. One day, Amelia looked at Nona and said, We should do something different with your hair. So Amelia curled it. Hmm, perhaps the braids are better, Amelia said. Best of all, Nona and Amelia liked to visit Grandma Conchetta. While Nona held the big book of spells and Amelia turned the pages, Grandma Conchetta always said, I knew the first time I looked at you, Nona, that one day you would become a strega. But I had no idea I would have two little girls to pass my magic down to. I am filled with contentenza, contentment. Nona and Amelia watched Grandma Conchetta mix her lotions and potions. They listened as she talked to the villagers about their troubles, headaches, warts, baldness, and other worries and gave them her remedies, along with good advice. And after all the villagers had gone back down the hill at the end of the day, Grandma Conchetta gave the girls wonderful plates of steaming hot pasta. It appeared from her pasta pot as if by magic, and it tasted so special that Nana and Amelia always asked Grandma Conchetta what her secret ingredient was. But Grandma Conchetta would only smile and say nothing. When the girls finished at the convento, the convent school, it was decided that they would go to the city and enter the Academia delle Streghe, the Academy for Stregas, where they would learn the most modern ways to do magic. Amelia loved the city, the bustle, the noise, and most of all the shopping, and she loved learning to use the Academy's machines and the new scientific ways to do spells. Nonna, she said, 
This is all so much better than the old ways Grandma Concetta uses. But Nonna missed the old spells. She didn't like the city streets, and she longed for walks in the country with Grandma Concetta, whom she missed most of all. So Nonna went home and climbed the hill to Grandma Concetta's house. Well, cara mia, Grandma Concetta said after hearing Nonna's story, the academia is a nut for everyone. I have a feeling you need to be right here with me. So Nonna began learning to be a strega from the best strega of them all, Grandma Concetta. She learned how to mix lotions and potions. She turned the pages of the big book for Grandma Concetta. And she watched the way Grandma Concetta treated each villager who walked up the hill to ask her for help. Every day, Nonna cleaned and polished Grandma Concetta's pasta pot. She knew it was magic, but Grandma Concetta never showed her how to use it. And whenever Nonna asked about it, Grandma Concetta always answered, there will be time enough, Nonna. Now, here is how you make the lotion to remove warts. Nonna, Grandma Concetta, it's Amelia, home for a visit. Oh, it was so good to see Amelia again. They all kissed and talked. Amelia talked the most, telling Nonna and Grandma Concetta all about the machines at the academy and the fancy scientific methods she now knew how to use. Did, did you learn any of the old spells? Grandma Concetta asked. Oh, yes indeed, Amelia answered. Watch the goat. She opened her notebook and chanted some strange words. Capra, goat, teto, roof, and Presto! With a bang and a cloud of smoke, Grandma's goat was on the roof. Ecco fatto! That's it, she explained proudly. It's a spell for moving things up. We use it to put things back on shelves. Isn't that a wonderful? Very good, Amelia. Now, will you get my goat down? Grandma Concetta asked. Amelia looked through her notebook. She looked and looked. I, uh, I must have gone shopping that day, she said. Maybe Nonna can do it, Grandma Concetta said. Nonna looked up at the roof. Then she ran into the house and came back with a bottle of olive oil. She climbed up the tree next to the little house and poured some oil on the roof. The goat slipped and slid right off. Oh, Nonna, how marvelously clever you are, Amelia said. But uh, look at what I have from the academy. She opened her borsa, purse, and pulled out a big piece of parchment. This is my diploma that says I am a genuine strega. Now, don't worry, Grandma Concetta, Nonna. I'm not going to give you any competition, she said, laughing at her own joke. But I am opening up a business in the town on the other side of the mountain. It's a much bigger and a busier than our little village, and it has so many shops. You must come and see me, she told them. Well, I'm off. Arrivederci, sweet Nonna, sweet Grandma Concetta. That evening, Nonna and Grandma Concetta sat outside before Nonna went home. Nonna was very quiet. Nonna Lina Cara, Grandma Concetta said. What does it matter? I guess I'll never be a real strega like Amelia. I, I won't ever have a diploma. Ah, Grandma Concetta said. You don't need a diploma to be a true strega. You already have everything you need. You have the spirit and kindness that come from the heart. And when I pass my practice over to you, I will tell you, the ingrediente segreto, the secret ingredient. Then you will be not only a true strega, but a great one. Years went by. One day, Grandma Concetta called Nonna to her. It's a time, Nonna. I am ready to retire. I am going to spend the rest of my days at the seashore, and you must take my place. You shall have my little house, my book of spells, my herbs, and my remedies. 
and in the cupboard I have left you my pasta pot with something inside it. And with that, Grandma Conchetta said, From this day forth, you shall be known as Strega Nonna. Then she put on her cloak, picked up her bag, and started down the hill. Nana stood in front of the little house that was now hers. She waved and waved until Grandma Conchetta was out of sight. Nana wiped away a tear and walked inside. She went straight to the cupboard and looked in the pasta pot. There she found a letter. Cara strega nonna, my magic pasta pot is now yours. Whenever you are hungry, sing the little song written here and the pot will a bubble and a boil and a fill with fresh hot pasta. When you have enough, sing the second song. But then you must blow three kisses and the pot will stop. For that is the ingrediento segreto, love. It is the same with all your magic, always love. Your Grandma Conchetta. More years passed, and Strega Nona was loved by everyone. She helped all the people who came to her with their troubles, even the priests and the sisters of the convent. She did have a magic touch. And always, Strega Nona never forgot the ingrediente secreto. Life was happy in the little house on the hill. Strega Nona kept the goat, a peacock, a rabbit, and a dove for company. But Strega Nona was getting old, and she needed someone to help keep her little house and garden and her dear animals. So she went down to the village square and put up a sign. The next day, there was a knock on her door. The rest is history. Well, now we know Strega Nona's story and how Big Anthony came to work for her. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks for listening.